You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. I do not beg for money, which is a great thing. It really is a great thing, especially coming from a preacher. It's, it's a great thing. I don't beg for money. All right, last thing here, baptism counseling. You know, maybe you have been baptized. Maybe you go to church. Maybe you've been in church for 40 years, and you feel like something's missing. Yeah, that's very possible. You know, church can become so routine, and you can sort of get burnt out on church. You know, I'm not very impressed with God's fan club. Not, not God, it's not God that I have a problem with. It's God's fan club that I have a problem with. And, you know, you can get burnt out on church, and you can think, wow, man, I, I don't know. I'm just not getting anything out of this anymore. God may be trying to tell you something. You know, often what God wants to change about a man or a woman is the way they think about God. The way you think about God, your theology, the, what, what you've been brought up, the way you've been programmed to think about God is critical. And if you're thinking wrongly about God, that can mess you up big time. It really can. You need to have a fresh, simplistic view about God and how God works. I tell you, I've given you a fresh view just by telling you that if you believe that you are freed from the moral law by virtue of grace, you're making a big mistake. Okay? You're making a big mistake. So, baptism counseling. What you should have known before being baptized. Now, I go through about, I forget how many questions, I, 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 topics I go through. It's a, it's a two CD um, audio about things you should have known before you went down in the waters of baptism, things that you should have been taught, things that were expected of you, things that God expected from you. You know, it's possible to go through the motion and miss the Spirit of God. And we sort of just console ourselves and think, well, I, I like Jesus, I love Jesus, and I, I, I think I'm saved, and I, I think I have the Spirit of God, and and God, the Spirit hasn't done anything great with me lately, and it hasn't done anything great in the last 40 years, you know. But I go to church, and I guess that's all it is to life, just going to church and, and just living your life. And then you get old, and you get ugly, and you kick the bucket, and that's it. No, a little bit more to it than that. The leadership of the Holy Spirit affects your life every single moment, every single day. That Spirit is working with you and through you. And I'm saying if you don't have it, you're not going to be aware of that daily um, leadership of the Holy Spirit. And it is leadership. It really is. You know, it's something that you can be in tune with. It's something that you can say, okay, all right, what, do, what am I thinking? What kind of stinking thinking do I have right now about God, about life in general? You know, what way do you want me to go, Lord? What do I need to do? The leadership of the Holy Spirit is there continuously. Once you receive it, once it unites with your spirit, truly a new creature starts to develop. A new creature in Christ starts to develop. And it is so powerful. You know, it's not the spirit, the leadership. It's not some kind of manifestation of gibberish. And you don't have to put on a show. You don't have to put on a show. That's not necessary. It's not about putting on a show. It's about humbling yourself, submitting to what God wants, His will, submitting to what He wants you to do today. Yeah, starts right now. God, what do you, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do tomorrow? Well, don't worry about tomorrow. Just worry about today. But to have that leadership there every single day of your life, when you get up fresh every morning and you say, okay, God's Spirit is here. And I'm going to be following the leadership of the Holy Spirit 